We start with breaking news tonight. People living in Sacramento County are now under a state of emergency after getting hit by a series of storms since March 8th. We've seen heavy rain, strong wind, and now the flooding and snow melt is leading to even more flood dangers. This declaration will give the county the power to use more resources when dealing with the aftermath of these storms. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laura Painter. And I'm Chris Thomas. It is a scary time for so many families. The heavy rain has breached levees and caused flooding across the state. Right now, powerful winds are the big concern across our area. So far, dozens of trees and power lines have been knocked down by the strong wind and caused the and because the ground is already soaked with water. This large tree fell across Southland Park Drive. We have a team of reporters tracking the storm, but we first start with our chief meteorologist, Monica Woods. Monica, wind is only adding to the major flooding problems we're already dealing with. Right about that, yeah, and those winds continue at about 25 to 35 miles per hour. Those are sustained winds. Those don't account for the stronger gusts, which are still in the range of 35 to almost 50 miles per hour. Some of the peak wind gusts reaching close to 75 to almost 80 miles per hour over towards the coast. And that's why we continue with this high wind warning for the Bay Area that will continue tonight with those gusts still at about 55 to 70 miles per hour. For the valley, we're going to hold on to those winds until about 11 o'clock, gusting at times to 50 to 60 miles per hour. And we saw some peak gusts in the valley close to 60 miles per hour. You also mentioned the risk of additional flooding. Most of the heaviest rain has shifted down to the south. You can see the plume of moisture definitely surging in through central and southern California, trekking a few afternoon thunderstorms here. Most of that has quieted down, but you'll notice still some embedded heavier downpours, especially throughout the mother load headed up into the high country. It is rain on top of snow adding additional impacts with runoff and snow melt. Temperatures right now still holding on to the 60s through the valley, 50s for the foothills, and 40s for the Sierra. That just shows you the warmth of this storm. Now, things are really starting to wind down here for tonight. We'll finally get a break in the action. But again, that doesn't mean the flooding risks are over. We'll go over all of that coming up. Monica, thank you. Water is rising in Roseville with Dry Creek pushing its banks in many locations. And so the big question, what is being done to address possible flooding? ABC 10's Devin Truby has more from one of the pumping locations. Roseville saw winds of up to 40 miles per hour. A neighbor told us he's using his chainsaw to cut the tree now rather than wait for the city because he and many other parents will need to pick up their kids from school. Residents on Cook Riola Road are also taking matters into their own hands. It change where it comes onto my property or where it goes off, but I can improve my property. Lined it all off and measured it all and did elevation checks and everything. Just kind of made this meandering stream through here. It took Derek Coria about a week to make his own creek 18 years ago. Since then, the closest his property has come to flooding was just some water up by his driveway. But he complained multiple times to the county for the safety of others. Standing water on the roadways was causing crashes. Well, I complained several times because people, I mean, I, I, my fence got taken out at least three times by people hitting the, because they come over that rise there and they don't see the water and then they hit the water and they've come through my fence several times. The county created this new culvert, but take a look, the water is ready to come through the drain. Do you have flood insurance? No, it's too expensive. We're taking available water that's that that would be an essential recharge. We're actually putting that water away by the savings account for uh, for, for, for tougher times. So in this case, it's going to be drier drought areas. Through Saturday, Roseville will pull in 44 million gallons. That's enough to provide drinking water to 366 homes for the entire year. During the January storms, they pulled in enough for 1,200 homes. And that was Devin Truby reporting. The Roseville groundwater program is expanding, adding two new wells that are almost complete. They plan to break ground on two more next month. In San Joaquin County, the fierce wind caused all kinds of distress and chaos for people living there. ABC 10's Kurt Rivera examines that part of our storm coverage today. Along roadways throughout San Joaquin County, gusty winds mixed with rain made driving treacherous. I think it's absolutely crazy. Adam Selegman of Lathrop witnessed an accident in Modesto while he was behind the wheel. And there was an accident right in front of me where the car had to swerve off to the side and there was a hydroplane and actually kept twirling around in circles. In Manteca, this portion of fence was no match for the gusty winds. Trash cans along the street were, well, trashed. Blanca Ramos became an impromptu trash can wrangler. 
Oh my God, so difficult, <laughs> so difficult. So I, I just want to pick it up at the, my neighbor's trash can, but I'm not really late for work too. <laughs> A short distance away, part of this front yard became unwanted lakefront property. The homeowner spoke to me through his ring camera. If we have multiple days of hard rain, then we'll, uh, we'll get a little bit of a We'll get a little bit of a pond out there. Here in this neighborhood around Sandman Park in North Stockton, power went out for about an hour. And power has been out sporadically across San Joaquin County. Trees have come down too. This one at a home across from Stockton's American Legion Park. You can see how it's rotted out where perhaps years of drought finally took their toll. Back on the roads, as this wild and crazy weather continues, Adam Selegman offers this familiar but important reminder. Drive slow. Yeah, we can't stress enough how dangerous this kind of weather can be. This afternoon in Escalon, multiple power lines came crashing down on Highway 120 between McHenry Avenue and Brennan Road. They fell on cars, but fortunately, no injuries were reported. And now to the Sierra. Take a look at this. They had more snow and high winds today. Some are having to build snow tunnels just to try to get into homes and businesses. And Cal Fire just released an update on the storm's major impact in the South Lake Tahoe area alone. They say more than 80 structures have been damaged. Nine even have a red tag. That means the building is just not safe to go inside. Snow loading is also a, a concern. That happens when the rain combines with heavy snow, leading to ceilings caving in. And in just the last hour, El Dorado County released the incident report for the county. 150 buildings inspected, 103 damaged, and 15 were red tagged. So be sure to download the free ABC 10 app to track the latest information on weather conditions, road, and school closures. You can also upload your weather photos and videos, and you just might see them here on ABC 10.